Today, inshallah, I want to share with you that in all the things that we journey cover when it comes to family, what are the three things I would say? The three most important things that we have to pay very close attention to. And I would say that for the majority of the times when there are relationship issues, the majority of the times when it comes to relationship issues, it comes down to three major areas of concern. So meaning that there are three things that are happening a lot within our families that is a cause of destroying our relationships. And by the way, these are three things that are key to every single relationship. It doesn't matter whether it's a relationship between a husband and wife, or parents and children, or even between even friends, even between relatives um, of, of the family. So the very first thing that's happening a lot within our families, which is destroying many of our families, is disrespect. Is disrespect. This is considered as a toxic char characteristic. Anyone who is disrespectful towards each other, it will cause a descent within the family. It will cause a descent within any kind of relationship. Now, subhanAllah, when we talk about families in particular, we're talking about disrespect amongst the family. Often what we see in families is that the majority of times the disrespect is happening between in-laws. It's happening between either husband and wife, or is happening between, for example, the wife and her mother-in-law. Or is happening between the father or the husband and his mother-in-law or his father-in-law. First of all is that when we talk about respect in general, Rasulullah would never ever disrespect anyone. And I've said this before and I'll remind everyone again. That Rasulullah was a son-in-law and he was also a father-in-law in the same capacity. He was a father-in-law to, he was a father-in-law to who? Ali and, and Uthman. And he was a son-in-law to who? To Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, anhumah. So never did he ever cross the, le, cross the boundary of respect. He never ever said that I am Rasulullah, I am the son-in-law, I can say whatever I want to say. No. This is something that happens a lot within our families, by the way. That there's a lot of disrespect amongst in-laws. How many times I've seen, and unfortunately this is the case, but I've seen majority of the times the men disrespecting their in-laws. Your daughter is my wife, is, and as if they say, Wallahi, when I hear them talk, it's almost as if that your daughter is my property. I can do whatever I want. I can talk to you however I want. I don't have to listen to you. When we cross the boundaries of respect, brothers and sisters, this is where we're going to have relationship issues. When we talk about a wife, she has to also respect her in-laws. Yes, I understand there might be differences. Yes, I understand that there might be, have been some cases in the past that has caused a dissent. But that does not mean that we disrespect each other. I have been through many cases where people have come to me, where women have come to me and they have told me that our mother-in-laws are coming to our home and my sister-in-laws are coming to my home. They're openly disrespecting me in front of my husband, but my husband does not say a single thing. And I had to remind that husband that if you are truly a man, then you will not let anyone disrespect anyone in your family. And that also means that truly a man should not even allow, I'm going to say this very bluntly, but if your mother or your sister or your brother, and this is from the perspective of a husband or a wife, they are coming into your house and they're disrespecting someone else in your house, then you should not even allow them to come to your home. Simple as that. Why? Because if you truly want to establish a concept of respect within your own kids, you have to teach your kids and you have to teach everyone in your family that disrespect is off the table. It does not matter who it is for. So, so a lot of times in our families, we cut slack that if these people come into my home, they can show disrespect, it's fine. But these people cannot show disrespect. No, brothers and sisters, disrespect is considered as unacceptable across the board. And that is what we need to stand up for. Rasulullah never disrespected his son-in-laws. Rasulullah never disrespected his father-in-laws. Rasulullah never disrespected his own 
I mean, he would never disrespect the slaves of his house. Rasulullah Sallallahu would never disrespect his own wives. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would never disrespect anyone who was related to his spouses. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always show respect even to his own stepchildren. Today in America, in many families, Muslim and non-Muslim families, we see that when stepfathers come into the picture, a lot of times there's abuse. A lot of times there's mistreatment. And subhanAllah, we learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when it came to the children, for example, in the case of Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, she had a child from Abu Salama. But when the child came, and when Umm Salama is, has married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she's bringing a child into that marriage, what did the hadith say? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is eating. In the same plate, can you imagine how much love Rasulullah is showing to his own stepson, not even his own biological son, his own stepson, eating in the same plate, subhanAllah. How much love Rasulullah is showing. And not only that, but the hadith says that when the child's hands were moving around the plate, then the Prophet he's telling him, that's, that take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kul bi meaning Eat from your side. Make sure your hand is not going around. It's not only just love, but it's also providing tarbiyah subhanAllah. So this is why, brothers and sisters, I say this within a very strong sense here. That if there's anyone who is coming into your family, into your home, and they are disrespecting anyone, then they should not be even allowed in your house. You need to set a precedent. We need to set a precedent in our house that disrespect is, com is considered as unacceptable in all circumstances. So this is the very first thing that is destroying majority of our relationships. The second thing that is, that is destroying our relationships is dishonesty. Now, it could be dishonesty where a person is truly dishonest, because in reality, if trust is lost in any relationship, that relationship will collapse. There's no, there's no question about it. When it comes to a husband and wife, if there is trust issues, then it does not matter whatever it is. There's always going to be trust issues. And that means that anything that the husband does is going to be always, there's going to be doubt involved. Anything that the wife does, there's going to be doubt involved. And that happens all the time. Even between, a, between friends, if there is trust that is lost, eventually that relationship will also collapse. Now, it's very important to also understand that when it comes to our relationships, we have to make sure that we have trust within our husband and wife. If they have shown a tendency or they have done something in the past that says that yes, trust can no longer be there, then yes, I would say that, okay, you can be, you can have a certain level or a certain amount of doubt in them. But the very first thing that has to be built within a relationship is trust. And we have to make sure that we don't do anything to violate that trust. So let me give you an example. There are times where, you know, this is why I say that before we get married, we always have to talk to our, our potential spouse. And we have to also let them know exactly what we do as, 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 you know, for business purposes or job purposes. The reason I say this is because every single woman is different. Every single man is different. There are some men and women, for them, it is completely unacceptable for their potential spouse to be conversing with anyone of the opposite gender. They're just very, I would say sometimes they could be insecure about it. Or sometimes they're just very strict about it that whoever I marry, I don't want them to be conversing with anyone of the opposite gender. That is why a lot of times when they find, you know, after they get married and they see that their husband are, con and because they have jobs and they're conversing with people of the opposite gender, it turns into a big issue. I've talked about this before that one time there was a doctor who got married. And when his wife, I mean, later on, the wife said, well, fine, because usually... It's like, okay, what do you do for a profession? How much money do you make and so forth? And for them, it was like, okay, alhamdulillah, he makes enough money that he can support uh, my daughter and so forth. They got married. But then realizing that a doctor has to converse with nurses, he has to talk to so many different people of the opposite gender. So 
this is his profession. This is what he has to do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you want food to be put on the table and you want a roof over your head, this is how your husband's going to work. And she made a very big issue about this, that why do you keep on talking to other, other girls? And why do you talk to other women and so forth? Well, that's part of his job. He's not being unfaithful. He's not crossing the, the, the bounds of, um, of being untrust uh, or being untrustworthy but simply he's just doing his job but this becomes the issue and then what happens is there's always a trust issue she's always she's always has this mindset that he's doing something that is wrong and not only that but putting then you know tracking him wherever he's going tracking whatever you know tracking his phone and so forth now look there are some husbands who are just clean as a slate okay their slate is absolutely clean. They give their husband, they give their wives their phones, and they say, "You can check your check my phone and so forth." But there are some husbands who are very protective of their phone, and they have a right to do that so. They have a right to do that so. Yes, it is better if you gave your phone to your wife and she went through it just so that you know that she has trust in you and you have trust in her. The point is that trust has to be worked upon, but at the same time, you have to know what you're getting into also. This is something very, very important. And if you feel that trust will not be, will not be there in any marriage, then do not even get into that to begin with. This is why even there are cases I've dealt with where sometimes even the man, the man is so subhanAllah, I would say that such a open book characteristic, or he has such an open book character, I would say, that he is so comfortable around every single person that then of course the wife is gonna have some kind of doubt, you understand? Then, I mean, because he's just, he's not even an open book. Like it's more than just an open book concept, you understand? So that is why you have to always make sure that you don't do anything that could violate the trust within any family. The last thing I would say, which is destroying many families, is the concept of controlling. See, I talked about this before, that whether, you know, what, is, what does a controlling kind of personality mean? It means that I want you to drop whatever you're doing and be there for me. This is what it means. I want you to drop whatever it is that you're doing and you come to my aid. And whenever you call out to me, I'm not going to be there for you. You understand? That's a controlling kind of uh, personality. Another kind of understanding of a controlling personality is that you always try to assert your power over them. You always try to show them that they are going to remain intimidated by you and you have complete complete control over their life. So a lot of times this happens also between a husband and wife and this also be happens between parents and children, even after they get married. So I've talked about this before, where sometimes parents have such a controlling personality over their children that though they are controlling their children, they have taught their children that this is not called controlling, this is called obedience. You understand? You are, mashallah, a very obedient daughter. You are a very obedient son. But it's not, they're not showing obedience. The parents have created such a situation that they have complete control over their life. Like that son and his wife cannot do anything without the parents being involved. And that's called being controlling. No matter what the situation is, and they play this kind of emotional kind of game with their own children at times. You and your wife, whatever you're doing, you drop it and you come to our aid. Or you and your husband drop whatever you're doing and come to our aid. And whenever you need help, we're not going to be there for you. So this is something that is destroying also many families because it's, you know, there's always in-laws involved. Now, this also happens between a husband and wife also. That there's a lot of intimidation. If you do this... SubhanAllah, and this is, by the way, a very back home mentality, a very, you know, overseas mentality. And many of us, we come from this kind of culture, unfortunately. If you do this, I will divorce you. If you do this, I will divorce you. This kind of controlling personality does not exist within our deen. You cannot, and this happens once again, you see many times husbands doing this. But husbands will say, if you do this, I will divorce you. If you do this, just the intimidation of divorce over and over again. And not only that, but on top of that, just complete control over them. Husband is saying, I want you to drop whatever you're doing and be there for me. But what about when the wife needs your attention? What about when the wife needs the help and she's never, then, then you're never there for her? Or it could also happen the other way around. But the point is, this controlling, there's a lot of families that are being destroyed and a lot of families falling apart. Why? 
because whether there's controlling issues from parents towards their children or between, uh, the, uh, between the husband and wife and their in-laws or even between the husband and wife. And once again, there was no control. When we say the life of the Prophet ﷺ, there was no concept of control over the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Never did any wife of the Prophet ﷺ feel that the Prophet ﷺ is controlling us, intimidating us and so forth. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if you want to be the wife of the Prophet alayhi wasallam, there are certain injunctions that you have to follow that are not required by other Muslim women. Okay, there are some certain rules that you have to follow that are not required for other Muslim women. And not only that, but if you're going to be the wife of the Prophet sallallahu you're going to have to sacrifice this dunya. The Pro Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this upon the wives of the Prophet sallallahu and they fully accepted with their whole heart. And then they were told that if you go through this, then inshallah in the hereafter, there will be an abundance and amount of, uh, of reward and blessings for you in the hereafter in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. But there was no control. Never did the Prophet Sallallahu have a controlling personality over his own family, whether his own kids. Even when it came to Ali and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, even the, yes, the, by the way, there are stories that are mentioned where there were conflicts between Ali and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anhum. But never did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever feel that he has control over Fatima or he has control over Ali. Despite the fact that Ali grew up in the house of the Prophet sallallahu When the Prophet sallallahu became a prophet, who was the person who accompanied the Prophet sallallahu wherever he went, whenever he would go and do ibadah in secrecy and so forth? It was Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. When the Prophet sallallahu became a prophet, Ali radiallahu an was 10 years old. So Ali radiallahu an was always around Rasulullah sallallahu and usually what happens in many cases, I would say, that when someone has always been around you all your life, you feel like you can control their lives. You feel like you can do whatever you want in their life and interfere as much as you want in their life because I have always been part of them and I've always been superior than them. But subhanAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam never had a controlling mindset over his daughter or even his son-in-law Ali radiallahu an. In fact, whenever he would go into the house of Ali and Fatima and he would notice or sense a, a conflict perhaps, then he will always be the peacemaker between the two people. So this is what we need to do. These are the three things I would say that for each one of us, for each one of us, we have to take stock of ourselves that are we doing this in our families? Number one is disrespect is not tolerated at all. Should not be tolerated in our families at all. Dishonesty and making sure that we work hard to establish trust between, in, uh, between our relationships. And number three is making sure that we don't ever try to have this personality of controlling other people or intimidating other people. This one, inshallah, if we can stay away from these three things, inshallah, you will see that there will be much more harmony within our own, within our families, inshallah, and within all of our relationships. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace and happiness to all types of relationships. Amin rabbil alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما